Hi, and welcome to HIFA School Physics Explained. In my previous video, I talked briefly about Rutherford and how he determined the planetary model of the uh, atom, in that, that the electrons are moving around a central nucleus, and he determined that through the gold foil experiment. But unfortunately, that, that particular model has major flaws, and it was later resolved by Niels Bohr. But before we look to Niels Bohr, we need to also have a little bit of history of the understanding of spectral lines. And why we need to discuss this is that because it is instrumental helping Niels Bohr in devising a model that corrects Rutherford's planetary model. So let's briefly talk about spectral lines. Now, spectral lines were first observed, first by Wollaston, by examining light from the sun using a prism and then later by Fraunhofer, a few years later, in 1813, using diffraction gratings. And what they discovered is that when you look at light coming from the sun, it splits up into its various colors of the rainbow. However, what they noticed is that there were certain lines etched across the spectrum. It was as if these lines were missing. Now, Wollaston incorrectly suggested that these were just simply the separations between the colors. But nonetheless, it was not able to be explained why these lines existed across the spectrum. In the 1850s, Kirchhoff, and you may know Kirchhoff also in terms of Kirchhoff's law involving electricity, also developed some understanding spectral lines. And within the laboratory, he noticed that if you would have just a pure light source, the spectrum was nice and even. However, when that light source was passed through a low density gas, cool gas, he discovered that certain lines started to appear. If, however, that gas was gently heated until it was starting to glow, and if the gas was of the same material, such as hydrogen, then he noticed that you would not have a rainbow spectrum. However, you would have a clear line, and that line would correspond with the missing line. So somehow, Kirchhoff assumed that the gas was absorbing some of the light, hence we call this now an absorption spectrum. Whereas when the gas itself was heated up, that the gas was emitting only a very specific color, and now we have an emission spectrum. Of course, Kirchhoff did not know why this occurred, but nonetheless, it was a big step forward in understanding a little bit about how light interacts with matter. Then we come up to Barmer. And Barmer was a mathematician. However, he's not remembered for mathematics work. He's remembered for his work on looking at spectral lines. And when he was examining the light passing through hydrogen, he was able to devise a mathematical relationship between the wavelengths and those lines. So he's using some mathematical analysis. He came up with a formula and he said that lambda was equal to h m squared over m squared minus n squared. h was some constant and n was 2 and m was a various integer values. So when he plugged in n equal 2 and then 3, 4, 5, and 6 into this formula, he discovered that he was able to identify the actual wavelengths of these lines in the visible part of the spectrum. That was in 1885, and a few years later, Rydberg actually modified the formula and came up with a very famous formula called the Rydberg formula. And basically, that 1 over the wavelength of the hydrogen spectrum is equal to r, where r is a constant, multiplied by 1 over n1 squared minus 1 over n2 squared. n1 is the value for 2 for hydrogen. Somehow people believe that 2 was some sort of fundamental number for hydrogen. And then 2 was a numbers 3, 4, 5, and 6. It's important to note that whenever you're doing any mathematical work with this formula, that n2 is always the larger one. So n2 must always be greater than n1. Of course, Barmer and Rydberg were able to mathematically determine the wavelengths, but there was no real understanding as to why this was the case. But that's a, a subject for a later video.
So here is the formula again, and let's have a look at our mathematical uh, problem. So the question here is, what are the wavelengths for the first two visible spectral lines for hydrogen? You may want to try this yourself and pause the video right here. So we know that 1 over the wavelength is equal to r. Now r, of course, is 1.097 by 10 to the power of 7. And then we multiply this. And remember, the first number must always be 2. So that's 2 squared minus 1 over. Now that we're going to do the first two, so the first value is going to be 3 squared. When you do that calculation, you get 1, 5, 2, 3, 6, 1, 1, point 1. Now, of course, that's 1 over the wavelength. So in this case, the wavelength is equal to 6.56 multiplied by 10 to the power of negative 7 meters. If, of course, we do the same thing for the second one, wavelength 2, if you do the mathematics, you're going to get 4.86 times 10 to the power of negative 7 meters. So there you have it. That is the Rydberg formula. But as I said, the reason why that was the case was not fully understood, but that took the work of Niels Bohr in 1913 to come to a complete understanding why the Rydberg formula works. I hope that's helped you understand spectral lines and stay tuned for my next video on Bohr where I will discuss how he will explain those spectral lines. I'm Paul from High School Physics Explained. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.